What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G to help you get more used to using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a quick way to customize your home screen. Now when you're setting up your phone for the first time, especially when it comes to the home screen, there is some stuff you might want to change, especially stuff like the wallpaper for example. Now you can technically do this from the settings, but a quicker way to do it is to press and hold your finger on any blank spot on the home screen, so like this and this menu is going to show up. As you can see, from here, you can change your wallpaper, customize your theme, add and remove widgets, and access some additional home screen settings. So yeah, definitely a great shortcut to have. And again, in case you missed it because the first time it's kind of easy to mess up, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen, and make sure it's actually a blank spot. If you hit a widget or an app, it's going to do this, which is not exactly what we want. So again, a blank spot so like this. And there we go. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. You can technically do this from the settings menu, but I'm going to show you the quickest way to do it. So the easiest way to get to your sound menu is by pressing either volume key, so like this. Then from here, hit the dots. And from here, hit the settings icon. And now, we are in the sound menu. So the first thing that's going to show up here as you can see is the volumes. So we got the ringtone volume, media volume, so if you're watching a video, listening to music, stuff like that, notifications, and then finally system sounds. And as you can see right here, by default, the actual volume keys are going to control the media volume. Then from here, if we hit this back icon, this is going to take us to the main sound menu. As you can see up here, we have a few different sound modes. Right now, I am in vibrant mode, but of course, you can also change it to sound or mute. Under this, we can change the ringtone and notification sounds. So if we go to ringtone, this is basically the default. And as you can see, there are a lot of different preset sounds to choose from. And then if you want to use your own, hit the plus button right here, and you can choose your own sound. Under this, we got system sound, so if we go here. So here, as you can see, there are a few different system sounds you can toggle on and off, and the system volume itself. Now, again, remember, I am currently in vibrate mode, and when you're in vibrate or mute, this is going to be off by default, but if I turn it back to sound, so I'm going to go back, hit sound, and now you can change the volume here. Under this, we got volume, so this is where we were before. Then from here, you can change the call vibration. So if we go here, there are a few different vibration patterns, or you can turn the vibration off. Notification vibration, so pretty much the same thing. System vibration, so this is more like feedback. And then finally, we got sound quality and effects. So if we go here, it's like EQ and stuff like that. I personally never mess with these settings, but if you want to, of course, you always can. And then last but not least, separate app sound. Now, this is another feature that I feel like most people probably don't use, but you can make the volume slightly different for different apps. So maybe if you're using Spotify, for example, and you want things to be at like full volume, but you want the volume of a specific game to be a bit lower. It is definitely a nice option to have, but in general, pressing the volume key is really not that hard anyway. So definitely one of those features you may or may not actually use. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock. Now, by default, the screen lock is going to be a pin, which it pretty much is on every phone. And I personally have the fingerprint scanner on too, so definitely nice, but I'm going to show you a few different options. So to get to these, go to settings. So the settings icon is right here. Then from here, go to security and privacy. So right here. And from this menu, go to lock screen. From here, go to screen lock. Enter your current pin. And as you can see, we have a few different options here. Again, pin will be the default. You pretty much need to set up a pin to even turn the phone on in the first place. But aside from this, we got password, which is of course, much higher security. You can use different characters and numbers and letters and whatever you want. Whereas of course with a pin, it's just a number. Then we got pattern, which is more of a medium security, kind of old school Android thing. I'm not a huge fan myself just because it's kind of easy to guess. So it's not really quite as useful, but it is always an option. Then we got swipe, which is pretty much no security, but at least there is still somewhat of a lock screen. And then none, which doesn't even have a lock screen. It pretty much just goes right to the home screen. And under this, we got biometrics. So if you have the fingerprint scanner and face unlock set up, you can turn them on and off from here. Now, to get the face unlock and fingerprint scanner set up, there is another step you're going to want to take. So if we go back to the main security menu, from here, as you can see right here, we got the fingerprint option. So if we go here, enter your current pin again, and then from here, pretty much everything you need for the fingerprint scanner. But then if you want to use face unlock, once again, go back to the main security menu. From here, go to biometrics, and the fingerprints once again are right here, and face unlock is right here. And pretty much all you have to do is follow some on-screen instructions after you put your pin in. And that's pretty much it. Once you get this set up, again, go back to the screen lock section, enter your pin again, and then you can turn on face and lock right here. 
Now I'm gonna show you how to hide an app. Now this is definitely a nice option to have because there are certain apps like the Galaxy Store, for example, that you might not really ever use, but unfortunately you can't delete them. So if I go here, you can remove it from the home screen, but unfortunately you can't actually get rid of it even if you never use it. But instead, if you don't want it cluttering up your app drawer, what you can do is actually hide it. So to do this, what you're gonna do is go to the menu I showed you in the very beginning. So once again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen, so like this. Then from here, go to settings. And from here, go to where it says hide apps. So right here. This right here is gonna show you all the apps on your phone and if you tap on one of them, it's gonna instantly hide it. Now, as you can see, the hidden apps are gonna be right up here. When you're done, hit done. And now if I go back, the Galaxy Store is nowhere to be found. So yeah, definitely a nice feature to have. And if you wanna unhide it, go back to that same menu. So again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot. From here, go to settings. Then from here, go to hide apps. And again, the hidden apps are all gonna be conveniently up here. To unhide it, just tap on the icon. Once again, hit done. And now if we go back, it's not gonna be on the home screen itself. So if you put an app on the home screen and then you hide it, you are gonna have to move it back yourself. But in the actual app drawer, Galaxy Store is right here. Now I'm gonna show you how to change your screen timeout time. Now there are really two parts to this because on one hand, depending on what you're doing, changing the actual screen timeout time can be useful, but I feel like for the reason a lot of people might wanna do this, there is a better solution, which I will be getting to. But to simply change your screen timeout time, what you're gonna do is go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to screen timeout time, which is right here. As you can see, I have mine set to 10 minutes. By default, I think it's gonna be like one minute, but definitely play around with it because depending on what you're doing with your phone, it will be a little different for everyone. Now, honestly, despite mine obviously being maxed out, I personally don't really recommend everyone does this because if you have a super long screen timeout time, this is gonna drain the battery pretty quickly and you might not always remember to turn off your display every single time you put your phone down. So again, depending on what you're actually using your phone for, even if you're doing stuff like reading, for example, where you wanna make sure your phone doesn't fall asleep when you're using it, simply having a longer screen timeout time might not be the best option because even in that kind of situation, say you're reading or something like that, if screen timeout time is really an issue, you're probably gonna be doing it for more than 10 minutes anyway. So I'm gonna show you a different solution that's honestly quite a bit more effective if you're consuming a lot of content. So for this, what you're gonna do is go back to the main settings menu. So right here, again, we are in the main settings menu right now. From here, go to advanced features. So right here. Then from here, go to motions and gestures. And in this menu, where it says keep screen on while viewing, turn this on. And with this feature on, the phone is gonna detect your face with the front facing camera. And as long as you're looking at it, the screen is gonna stay on. That way you can have a more normal screen timeout time. But at the same time, if you're doing something like reading, for example, where you wanna make sure the screen stays on the whole time, you still won't have to worry about that either. Now I'm gonna show you how to change the system navigation. Now by default, like pretty much every Android phone, the navigation bar has these three buttons at the bottom, but we do have a few options here. To get to these, go to settings. From here, go to display. And then from here, go to where it says navigation bar. So right here. So again, by default, we are gonna be on button navigation with recent apps on the left, the home button of course in the middle, and the back button on the right. If you want, you can switch these around. So now the back button's on the left, and recent apps is on the right. And in addition to this, we can switch to what's called gesture navigation. So if we do this, now instead of buttons, we're gonna have one line right here. So it looks a little bit more minimalistic. Now in case you've never used this before, let me show you how it works. To go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And to go back, swipe from the side. So pretty straightforward. And then from here, if you go to more options, you can also use what's called swipe from the bottom. So if we do this, it's basically gonna be like a hybrid between gesture navigation and button navigation. I'm personally not a huge fan, it just seems kinda of pointless, but basically with swipe from the bottom, if you swipe up from the left, it's gonna to go to the recent apps, the middle is gonna be like a home button, and of course, the right is gonna be a back button. So pretty cool to have different options, but I personally would stick with regular gesture navigation or just the buttons. But if you haven't already, definitely try everything out, because at the end of the day, it's really up to personal preference. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use dark mode. Now, this is a real simple feature. To activate it, go to settings. From here, go to display. And right up here at the top, by default, you will be in light mode, but if you want, you can turn on dark mode right here. So that's pretty much it. Definitely real nice. Some people use it for the aesthetic and it also can be a little bit easier on your eyes, especially at night. And in addition to this, if you go to dark mode settings, you can have it turn on automatically. So if we toggle this on, you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or set a custom time. 
In addition to this, if you just want to quickly turn it on or off, you can also swipe down from the top right here one more time. This is what I call your quick menu, which is just a bunch of features you have quick access to. In dark mode is on the second page. Tap on this icon. And once again, we are in dark mode. So pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. Definitely one of the easier features here. So to take a screenshot, all you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind you don't have to hold them, just press them real quick. So like this. This toolbar is going to show up, you can share it, edit it, whatever you want to do. And that's pretty much it, it's going to be saved right to your photos. So yeah, taking a screenshot here is definitely real easy. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Adaptive Brightness. Now this feature is basically going to adjust the brightness of your display based on your environment. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, or in a bright room, it's going to brighten things to make it easier to see. But if you're in a darker area where you really just don't need 100% brightness, it's going to dim the display. So to get to this feature, go to Settings. From here, go to Display. And then from here, adaptive brightness is right here. Again, real simple, toggle it on, and it adjusts right away. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.